Good afternoon. This is lesson number five in the life of Jesus, and we are considering um, Jesus' temptation of Satan in the wilderness. In Matthew 4, verse 1, we read, Then Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. At no time is the devil in charge. It was even the Holy Spirit that led him to go through this so that you could never say, nobody knows what I'm going through. Nobody knows what it's like. Jesus has been there before you, and he made it through, and we can follow his example to get through. The Holy Spirit led him up to a place where he was going to be tempted of the devil. Verse 2, And he had fasted for forty days and nights, and afterward he was hungry. Now, I haven't done a forty-day fast. I have fasted, prayed, I have posted prayer and fasting meetings and so forth, but I have never fasted and prayed for forty days. But I'm told that after the first couple of days, the hunger leaves you. But then at the end of the fast, it comes back. Jesus was at the end of a 40-day fast, and he was hungry. And when the tempter came, he said, If thou be the Son of God. Listen, there's no question. He was the Son of God. Satan knew he was the Son of God. But remember that if, if, if of Satan, in the garden he said to Eve, Oh! Did he tell you that you weren't supposed to eat of a certain fruit? Oh, did he say, you well and good. If you be the Son of God, command the stones to be made bread. We don't have to do what Satan suggested. God had the power to do it. He could have done it on any one of those days of the 40-day fast. But Jesus answered him the way we have to answer when we're tempted, with scripture. And he answered and he said, it is written. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. To exist as a Christian, we need not bread. We need every word that proceeds of the mouth of God. Then the devil takes them up to the holy city, took him to the city of Jerusalem. And he set him on one of the pinnacles of the temple. The temple wasn't destroyed until much later. And he said, If thou be the Son of God. You know, that makes most human being male say, what do you mean if? Of course I am. And I'll prove it. Jesus did not have to prove anything. He was who he said he was. He didn't have to prove it to Satan. He didn't have to prove it to anybody. And we don't have to give in. And somebody says, well, if you're a real man, do this. No, you don't have to. You can be a real man and not do what other people suggest you do. And Satan said, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, Now the devil's about to quote scripture. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Is Jesus going to fall for that? If you be the Son of God, it is written, it's the same thing before he did. Be, uh, he did before. He said, "Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God." It's not going to get you anywhere. You're wasting your time. Verse eight again. The devil taketh him up to an exceedingly high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. 
all of these kingdoms of the world, now remember Satan is prince of the power of the earth. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Remember that Satan was an archangel, a beloved archangel. He had an important position. And he gloried in the importance of his position. But that wasn't enough. Satan wanted to be like God. And the important places of the world were very important to him. God owns them and they mean nothing to him. He said, took him to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. That's what was important to Satan. But the Bible says, for God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. If thou wilt fall down and worship me, that's what Satan wanted in heaven. If you will go back to the life of Christ, lesson one. There's an explanation there about the fall of Satan. Go back and check that out. He said, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. First he said, Prove who you are. But now Satan is getting down to the nitty gritty of who he is and what he wants. He wants to be worshipped. Verse 10, then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, regarding worship, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. I think I have time to go on with the calling of... Uh, the first disciples. After Jesus was baptized in John 1, 35, Jesus was coming up the road and John the Baptist was coming up the road with two of his disciples. Many teachers, preachers, had followers who followed them. They were like students. They wanted to be with them everywhere they went so they could learn from him. And John's Two disciples were with him. And John the Baptist pointed at Jesus and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Two, that, that, that was John's whole purpose in being here, was to show who Jesus was. He had followers that were learning from him. That now that Jesus was here, those two followers began to follow Jesus. And one of them his, said to him, Master, where do you dwell? Where are you spending the night? And Jesus said, come and see. And they wanted to know where he dwelt and where he abode, for it was about the tenth hour. Well, if the sun came up at six, then it would be about four p.m. And one of them, the two disciples that left John and followed Jesus, his name was Andrew. Andrew had a brother whose name was Simon Peter. So the ex-disciple of John the Baptist, now the disciple of Jesus, goes to get his brother. And he says unto him, We have found the Messiah, which being interpreted is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus saw Simon Peter, he said, Thou art Simon, son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas. The interpretation of the word Cephas is a stone. And then John 1 says that Philip, that day Jesus went forth into Galilee, finding Philip and said unto him, Follow me. And Philip did. Now, Philip was from a place called Bethsaida. And that was the same city that Andrew and Peter were in. And Philip finds Nathaniel and he says, We have found him of whom Moses and the prophets speak. The Jewish community, you 